Hey guys, well, welcome back to another episode of the Hunting Grounds. On this video, I'm going to show you guys some details on the food plots, what has worked and what did not work this season so far, and we'll just kind of dig right on in. So here we go, we've made it back to the soybean food plot and where do I begin? The deer have hit this incredibly hard this year. Last year I had um, about half acres of soybeans back here and I had the other half acre at the front of the property. Now here on the hunting grounds, that's primarily what we have is a lot of ridges and hill slopes and so most of our food plots are up on top on these flat portion of the ridges. Well, my house is not more than a few hundred yards from each of my larger food plots just because it has to be that way because uh, that's where my house is situated and I already had existing fields here and I wanted to pour as much food onto the property as possible so I had to plant the fields around my house. It's not slowed down the deer, the deer still get out here and you can even hunt <laughs> just right outside off my backyard if you really wanted to. But anyway, last year the deer browse and the soybeans were really heavy back here and not so heavy on the front. So this year I decided to expand this food plot and at least double the size of it. So it's at least an acre to an acre of half of soybeans back here. I figured that'd be enough that the soybeans could keep up with the browse pressure. This year we've had kind of on and off droughts of a week or two without rain and then we get a flood and it goes a week or two without rain. But at this time last year, my sister and I were standing in soybeans at waist height. I figured that's the way it was going to be this year. If you look at my utilization cage back here in the back, you notice that they're over knee level in the utilization cage and it doesn't matter where you go in this entire area of soybeans, you're not going to find any more of them than about six inches maybe on average. That's it. And as I'm spinning around, you're seeing some different heights in this food plot, and that's because I'd come in with a summer mix, and I did little strips through here, primarily uh, to create a different kind of browse for the deer, and to hopefully allow uh, like doves and stuff to start using this food plot, and they'll start using the front food plot, and we'll get a good flight zone through there, and we can do some dove hunting here. But in this, you have sunflower, you have buckwheat, you have cowpea, and you have soybean all in this mix. And I just went through and I created little strips, which has done great. And the deer have gotten in there and started browsing on it, but they've even come through and just combed these areas in between that are of the soybeans. They came in and there's not a soybean that's exposed just around other soybeans that's more than six inches tall. And what's done really well is in the summer mix, it's really sheltered some of those soybeans, allowed some of the soybeans to get some height everything's doing really well in that right now so maybe that's one thing to take away from this maybe next year when i go in i plant some soybeans to take some of the pressure off and kind of hide them while the deer are browsing go in and plant some of these other variety of plants with them that will kind of camouflage them in and allow the browse pressure to not be so much where the deer kind of have to work for them a little bit more but i will tell you that i'm not upset there probably is going to be people that are like, why don't you go ahead and put a fence around this food plot? I've done that in the past, and that's primarily for hunting purposes. Not that I'm not doing this to hunt, but my first thing on this property is I want to grow bigger and healthier deer, period. And if they're eating the food plot that I am planning for them during this critical time of the year when they're growing, they're putting on their antlers, they're producing milk for their fawns and everything else, then I am happy. I will tell you one thing that I am excited about this year. Last year these soybeans got to probably four to five foot on average. So I came in and broadcasted directly over the top of those four to five foot soybeans in with turnip and rape and some winter wheat and it didn't germinate as well as I wanted to. It did germinate underneath but by the time the soybeans lost their leaves and everything there was not a lot of it left. I was left with maybe 10 to 20% of the food plot actually germinated and grew throughout the hunting season. Now, if I was more up north, I'd be more concerned with making sure I get the standing bean pods because I know I'm gonna have big snows and I know that's 
food that's exposed above the snow and it's easy for deer to come in. But here down south, we are in southwest Missouri. We don't get a lot of big snows, especially the last 10 years. So we get a few inches, if that. And last year, even though I had tons of standing bean pods, the deer just did not hit on them during daylight hours. They'd come in at night and they'd hit on them really well. Now all of my green plots that grew green throughout the entire winter, they were in in the middle of the day, which made for great hunting. But in these soybean fields, that just wasn't the case. So what that's gonna allow me to do having these shorter soybean stalks is I can come in, they are Roundup ready, I can spray them with Roundup, make sure I eliminate any of the weed competition, then come in with a no-till drill, plant some greens right over top with some turnip and some rape and some wheat right inside of them, you know, get good germination there, or I can come in and topically just broadcast some seed right on top on the exposed soil right before rain, and I'm gonna get good germination there. So I think in all, it's going to be better for the hunting grounds property because we are down further south. It's going to allow more greens to be planted and have those green food plots throughout the entire winter season. And right now it's providing a ton of nutrients and food for the deer during this critical growing season for them. But right now I'm taking you to a portion of this food plot that did not go as planned and it was a failure. But I've got it going now and I'm going to show you all about it. So walking in this food plot, you might not think it looks bad and it doesn't anymore. It was really, really bad. This was in another area of this food plot. That, as you can tell, I've got about an acre of clover up here on top. We've got the soybean field right up on top of that. On each side of the clover field, almost the entire length of the clover field, I brought down soybeans on each side. Well, this was a new area this year and I encountered a problem that I just was not ready for. The previous landowner had brush hogged this property for years and years and years and years and years. And over time, have built up such an organic like mass that was on top of the soil. Just like you can see here, it was almost like a pure like weed barrier and carpet. Rough stuff. So what happened when I planted soybeans in this plot, it came in just like I normally would do. Sprayed this plot with Roundup, came in with a no-till drill. It is an older no-till, I can't calibrate it as well as I'd like, and needs a lot of parts replaced. So what happened, it cut right through this stuff into the soil, planted them, and I believe a majority of them germinated just like they have every single time. But what happened was this stuff kind of closed back up, the seeds weren't able to make it through, and those that did were just like a green head of cabbage out there in the middle of the desert and the deer just came out of these woods right here and devoured them and picked them off because they were so few and far between and they were just in a desert surrounding them it was just too easy for them to target so then i was left with this basically going all to weed and i did not want that to happen so i did one thing that i didn't think that i was going to do on this property since i did it at the very beginning i came in i sprayed it all again killed all the weeds and i burnt it burnt it hoping to get rid of a lot of that uh, just organic carpet that the seeds could not get through and it came in with the disc and I lightly disced right over the top no more than an inch and you can tell that we're in rocky area because even just disking an inch has left a lot of big rocks on top of the soil. Disked it over once, came through with seed and seeded it and then disked it over once more to cover up the seed. Now I had the summertime mix left and I didn't even have enough to plant this whole entire food plot. I did the perimeter and I didn't want the middle just to grow up with weeds because that was something I was going to be battling later on. So I had some deer radish. It was early to plant it but I went ahead and planted deer radish because something growing other than weeds is better than nothing and it's doing phenomenal. A little early to plant like I said but it's a whole lot better than weeds. So this food plot is actually turned around and is doing really well and I've just recently feathered the edge back here. so. The loggers had done a select cut on the hillside, which is promoting a lot of growth, which is a lot of browse. So it's hopefully gonna take some pressure off the food plots. It's got a lot of bedding, and then I've done that now on the edge. So it's gonna add a lot of browse there and bedding, and then the deer are gonna hopefully hold up there and be right in this food plot a whole lot sooner during the season. And I'm gonna be sitting right back there in that redneck just watching this whole thing play out. So the food plot failed, I learned from it, and We'll see what we do here next year. Might extend the clover plot all the way over and we might just come in and plant a summer mix or we might be planting soybeans. We never know, but did encounter something and it's doing good. It's only had a few rains on it. You can tell it's green enough. The deer are in here, they're browsing like crazy and I'm pretty happy with it. 
So there you go, not everything turns out perfect the first time here on the hunting grounds. But like I said, I wanna bring you my successes and my failures so I can one from learn from them, but hopefully somebody else out there takes something away from it. We've got a lot of stuff going on. I am working a contract right now with a dozer that's gonna be coming out and building ponds strategically on our property. We're gonna be clearing a two to three acre timber ridge back here and putting a big food plot. So you guys will not wanna miss all the videos coming up. We even have some fishing videos coming up here in the near future so make sure you guys subscribe to our videos uh, down below be sure to comment maybe you've had a problem with one of your food plots that we can learn from or you've had a similar problem as me here comment down below tell me what you enjoyed about this episode make sure you give a thumbs up and then guys until next time have a better than average day Won't you take a little ride?